Today we're going to have a look at the bandsaw. It's a large machine in the workshop which is used for resawing timber and cutting curves. The bandsaw gets its name because the blade is actually a large band that runs around two large flywheels. The bottom wheel is the driving wheel, it's the one connected directly to the motor. The top one is free spinning, so it'll spin around and it's used for adjusting the tension and for tracking the blade on the top wheel so that it runs true through the guides. The bandsaw blade is kept in place by some brass guides that run on either side of the blade. There's one set of guides below the table and another set of guides above the table. As well as the brass guides, there is a bearing behind the blade that is allowed to spin so that when there's pressure put against the blade by a piece of timber, it stops the blade from pushing backwards. There is one of these bearings below the table on the blade as well. The bandsaw has several adjustment wheels or knobs that you need to be aware of when you're setting up the bandsaw to use. This wheel on the side is the tightening wheel that allows you to raise or lower the blade guard. Now when you are setting this, you want to have it set so that the timber will pass just below the guide bushings. That way when you're using the saw, there's no, less chance of your hands coming into contact with the blade. Never under any circumstances have the blade up this high if all you're doing is cutting something that's 12 or 19 mil thick. Too much of the blade is exposed, there's too much of a chance of your hand being cut or of the blade actually being caught, buckled or snapping. This wheel under here, which is just above the table, is one that's used to set the tension of the blade when the machine is being set up. This is one that you don't need to touch when you're preparing to use the bandsaw. Before you go to use the bandsaw, you need to make sure that you are wearing your correct PPE. Basically that means a set of goggles to protect your eyes from any timber that might come out, and a pair of hearing protection, whether it's the large earmuffs or smaller earplugs just to protect your hearing from those high pitch noises that can happen when you're cutting through timber such as hardwood when the blade squeals a little bit more. You also want to make sure that when you're using the bandsaw that any loose sleeves are pulled up so that there's no chance of your sleeves getting caught in the machine. If you happen to wear a tie when you're in the workshop, just like me, having an apron on is one way of making sure that the tie can't fall forwards into a saw. There's not much chance of it falling forwards into a bandsaw because it's not like I'm leaning over it like I would be on a table saw or over a machine like a router. When making a cut on the bandsaw, you wanna make sure that your hands are as far away from the blade as possible. So if you're using a piece of timber this side, try and have them right out towards the outside edges and feed the timber in slowly. Let the blade do the cutting don't try and force it through. One thing that happens with the bandsaw is when it hits some of the harder grain, it does slow down and then it'll speed up as it goes through some of the softer grain. I'll do a demonstration with this piece. The process where the bandsaw comes into its own is for cutting curves. Outside curves are fairly easy, inside curves are easy as well, but they can vary depending on how tight the curve is. For an outside curve, start with the blade and simply slowly feed it around, keeping your hand away from the blade at all times, and then that can be cleaned up on the this end. If you want to do an internal curve, such as cutting out this section here. One way of making it easier is to do what are known as relief cuts by cutting straight in and out and then doing this outside curve. Again, keeping your hand clear of the blade. So I've done my relief cuts and now I can do my curve. While that cut was being made, you may have noticed a ticking sound from the blade. That's actually from where the join of the blade is. And sometimes when blades are repaired, 
the join can be just slightly thicker or have a tiny little bend in it. In this case, this blade looks like it actually does have a bit of a kick in it and it's making it jump every now and then. This is one reason why the bandsaw isn't really good for very accurate cuts unless you've got a really nice blade that's been set up really, really well. If you ever plan on doing a complex curved cut or something like this, best idea is not to try and do the whole cut in one go. Even doing relief cuts with this is one way of, of helping, but one way that you can make the cut a lot easier on yourself is after doing some relief cuts through here, if you start to come through this way along your line, you might just bring the blade straight back out to get rid of all of this material first. And then you can do some more relief cuts and then carry this cut through here and maybe then come straight back out. And then you can bring the blade back around and complete your cut. To demonstrate what I meant with cutting out this area, I'll just do this section so you can see the thought process of cutting out using relief cuts and not trying to do the whole thing in one go. Once I've done all these relief cuts, I can now follow my curve around. And in sections like this, where it gets in very steep, where this section is here, you'd want to be really careful. One thing with a bandsaw is if you're doing a long curve, you can't back it out of the curve. Because if you try to pull the timber back out of a long curve, there's a good chance that you could pull the blade right off the saw at the same time. Now you'll notice I kept switching directions that I came in to do this cut. There's no rule that says you have to go from left to right or from right to left. You can come in from all directions to basically make the cut as safe and easy as possible. Now this section here, I'm not going to be able to get this curve with the blade that's on the saw. So I've got to try and take this out in sections and I'll show that now. Notice I'm removing my scrap now once the blade has stopped. You don't want to go reaching around this blade area at all if you can help it while the blade is running. And you can just keep going in and out meet your line with the tip of the blade. And this final part here, I can clean up with the files or sandpaper or something like that. You should avoid as much as possible trying to cut round stock on the bandsaw because what can happen is as the timber's coming in, the blade's going to want to grab this timber and it will spin the timber, causing it to jam and could possibly pull your hand into the machine as well. So. Avoid cutting round stock if at all possible.